Praise God. I want to welcome us again to this beautiful moment. It is my prayer that the Lord God of heaven will bless each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. You know, we are looking at a topic that is so crucial this morning. We are looking at help in service. Help in service. You know, when we talk about help in service, you know, many at times, many people thought oh, that they are doing God in service by doing one thing or the other. But let me tell you, people of God, there's a whole lot of misconception around this. And then the reason why many at times people have served God over the years. Some people even serve God and then they became so, you know, embittered towards one another, particularly with the church service, you know, with the service at work, with the service even in our marriage. Because for so many of us also, our marriage is a form of service to God. But this morning we are here to look at the old concepts of the app in service. Then we are starting from service itself. What is service? And by the time we are done with this meeting this morning, it is my prayer that the Lord God of heaven will do what only him alone can do in all our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our text for this meeting is from Exodus 23, verses 24 to 27. Um, permit me to share my screen with you so that you are also able to follow. Exodus, Exodus 23. I'm sure you should be able to see my screen right now. Exodus 23. And um, we are going to commence the reading from verse 24. And it reads, it says, Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quit break down their images. Let me say this to you, people of God, before we are able to offer service to God, there is a pattern. There is a modu operandi. There is a way that God wants to be served. He said, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. He said, there shall not cast their young, nor be barren in the land. He said, the numbers of thy days I will fulfill I will send my fear before thee, and I will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thy enemies turn their back unto thee. I will make all thy enemies turn their back unto thee. People of God, there are two sides to service. The side of a man and the side of God. And let me tell you, the most potent side in service to God is the side of God. He said, I will do this, I will do that. I will bless your bread. I will bless your water. I will take away sickness from the midst of thee. Let me say this to trouble your mind for a second. I, during the time that we were preparing for this meeting, we came to a point and we said, no man is actually serving the Lord in the real sense of serving the Lord. And I will explain. God sent Moses to Egypt to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. And let me say this to you. God brought to bear 10 plagues in Egypt. And eventually he got his people out. He parted the Red Sea to take them through the dry land. He gave them manners from heaven. He brought out water from the rock for his people. He became the pillar of cloud to them in the day and the pillar of cloud to them during the night. The pillar of cloud to them during the day and the pillar of fire to them during the night such that they are able to travel all day long. 
Now, let me ask, and to cap it all, he said, he that keepeth his strength, neither sleep nor slumber. Now, my question to you in this meeting this morning is this, how are we serving the Lord? How are we serving the Lord? When you look at the analogy that I just gave, in, the, in, that, in that story, can you see where men serve God? Can you see where that they were able to actually serve God? You know, it got to a point, they said Moses was on the mountain, they removed their earrings like we do today. Some of them, you know, we build small gods around our service to God. And then we begin to do it the way we want it done. Let me tell you people of God, you cannot serve God anyhow. I cannot serve God anyhow. There is a way that God wants to be served, provided if that kind of service will be an acceptable service to God, provided if that kind of service is going to be a reasonable service to God. And hear this from me this morning, your service, my service to God, does not start from the church and end there. I've said as we started that there is a there are people that their marriage is a service. You are you are working with a boss in the office, your obedience to that boss becomes a service to God. The Bible says, let everyone that work, says, let them do their work as if they are doing it unto the Lord. That and be my mantra. So in that story, how do they serve God? And you, we, we are going to see a whole lot of things this morning as we make progress. And that will leave us without any iota of doubt that when God calls a man into service, it's because God wants to bless such a man. That when God calls a man into service, it's because God wants to transform such a man. Look at the case of Dorcas in Acts chapter 9. The Bible talks about Dorcas. Dorcas was not a prophetess. She was not a pastor, not a pastor's wife. But she give arm to the people. You know, she, she saw cardigans and all of that for them. That was a service to God. You know, through the people of God. You know, the Bible said that he does this for the saints and he also did it for the widow. Let me ask you this morning. What is that thing that God had laid on your mind and he said to you, do this four times in a year, every quarter. Do this two times in a year. Do this one time in a year. Have you been consistent in the doing of it? He, see, the promise of, there's no problem with the promise that God made. I will say that again. There is no problem with the promise that God made to you and I it, when it comes to service. The problem is our deviation from what is said we should do. Praise God. Let's, let, let, let me share again. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. You know, when you, when, when you look at it, what is then service? What is service? And I said, service is work done for others. The work that you do for others, whether to fellow human beings or, or to God himself. You know, a service is an activity or benefits that are being an offer to another that is essentially intangible and does not result in the ownership of anything. It does not result in the ownership of anything. You know, many a times people are serving God and they will say, oh, this is, this is what I've built by myself. Can any man build anything? The Bible says that the labor inventors that build if God does not do it. Look at the third one. It says, to serve means to perform duties or service for another person or an organization. That is what it means to serve. And I said, to serve in this context is to perform the will of God. Hear that, this is crucial. To serve in the context of what we are looking at this morning is to perform the will of God. While you are on this side of the divide, while we are all together on this side of the divide, service means to perform the will of God. Now, let me ask you, that thing that you are doing, this that I'm doing with you this morning, is it the will of God? Did God ask us to go ahead and do it? That is where the question is. And I can tell you, people of God, for free, you may not be popular with men, but when you are doing the will of God, when you are in obedience to the instructions of God, when you become popular with God, very soon, you will become the only popular jingle with men. I give you an example from the book of Daniel. You know, when they arrested the three Hebrew guys and they brought them to 
together. The king said, you, you guys said you are not going to bow down. He said, who is that your God that is giving you deliver? And we see what will happen today. He said they should increase the fire. And they hurriedly did that. And they pushed them into the fire. Guess what? When they were pushed into the fire, the, 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 the king suddenly observed that it seems as if there was a fourth person with them in the fire. And the king asked, he said, were there not three that we put in there? He said, I saw the fourth person. He said, and the fourth person is, you know, was like a son of God. Let me ask you, who introduced the son of God to the king? There is something about our life when we live in obedience and in total alignment with the instruction of God that brings the presence of God to bear in our soul. I decree in the name of the Lord God of heaven today, let everything that makes it difficult for us to obey God, let them drop off in the name of Jesus. Let those things drop off in the name of Jesus. Every relationship that has taken us away from God, let God break those relationships this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Look at 1 Samuel 2.35. He said, then I will raise up a faithful priest. And just put your name there. I will raise up a faithful Oluwole, you know, who will serve me and do what I desire. Let me tell you, people of God, when it comes to service of God, there is a desire in the heart of God. There is a will that God has. We will see more as we make progress. He said, I will establish his family. There is an establishment in God when we are able to serve God. And like I said, it is not only limited to church. He said, and they will be priests to me, to my anointed kings forever. God wants to show me and you to the kings. God wants to promote us in the place of our work. But how diligent are we? Are we obedient to the instruction of God? Are you not thinking, but I'm older than him. I'm older than her. And she, you see, he is my boss. I, I cannot submit to him. When you do that, you will never be a, a priest to the anointed kings of God. There are things, see, God is a God of order. And when it comes to service, is an ordered, enabled assignment. He said, and look at Judges 2 7. He said, and the Israelites served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the leaders who outlived him, those who had seen all the great things that the Lord had done for Israel. Praise God. Those who have seen all that the Lord had done to Israel. Now, Look at these two scriptures as we as we take up that part of the meeting. He said, Acts 13 36. He said, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God. See, there is something about the will of God that makes service valid. There is something about the will of God that validates your service to God. That validates your service and my service to God. He said, He fell on sleep, fell on sleep, and was laid unto his fathers. He said, and saw corruption. Look at 37. He said, but he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Talking about Jesus. Let me say this to you people of God. When we are able to serve God, it is primarily for our own benefit. It is primarily for our own benefit. The last scripture there, Luke twenty two forty two, 42, saying, he said, this is Jesus speaking. He says, saying, Father, in doubt be willing. Let me tell you, service at times can discomfort you. Service at times can make you so uncomfortable with so many things. Service at times may not be at your own time because someone has a desire and it is the God Almighty. He said, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy be done. Thy will of God be done. Every time we are out to do the will of God, something changes about our life permanently. He said, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him, strengthening him, 
Strengthening him. People of God, hear the word of God from my mouth this morning. Anytime and every time that we desire to obey God, anytime and every time that we follow the leaders of God, there is an angelic intervention that brings easiness into that thing that we do. You no longer look at yourself to be anything. Paul said, all the things that I can to be gained for me, he said, I count them as dung, sir, that I may gain Christ. There is something that you need to lose. Those things look valuable to us, but permit me to announce to you, those things are vanity compared to what God wants to do with our lives. The Bible speaking concerning Jesus, he said, for the glory that was set before him, he said, he endured the cross. If you have it, you cannot serve without a seeing eye and a hearing here. And that's why you see many people today, you know, I, I, I'm afraid at times to say that I'm doing the work of God. Why? Because God himself has a pattern. Am I able to follow that pattern? Are you able to follow that pattern? It, it is my prayer that this morning, God will give us grace upon grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Grace upon grace in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible speaking, he said, for you know the grace, he said, for you know that he said, God is able to make every grace overflow towards us. There is a grace for service. Receive that this morning in the name of Jesus. Let's receive that grace this morning in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Now, what are the ingredients of service? What are the ingredients of service? Service as ingredients, sir. Service as ingredients, man. Look at Genesis 26. You know, let's just read verse 4 and 5 there because of our time. You know, this was the case of Isaac. He wanted to go to Egypt. He, he wanted to relocate to a place. You know, let me tell you something. Relocation is not bad. You know, because that looks like most the in thing around us now. But is God leading you? Is God leading me? See, because God will not become the finisher of what he has not uttered. He will not, become, he will not pay for the order that you made on your own. And there are examples everywhere in the scripture. You know, let's read it from verse one so that it can be clear. He said, and there was a famine in the land. There was a trouble in that land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. He said, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gera. He said, and the Lord appeared unto him and said, go not down to, into Egypt. There is a place not to go down. But you remember that there was a time that God said, take my son to Egypt. He, he asked them to take Jesus down there. And after, he said, I call forth my son from Egypt. That was even Jesus. Why? Because there was a calamity that Jesus needed to escape. Even though he has all the power, those things come with the fullness of time. He said, so John in this land, and I will be with thee. And I will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. He said, I will perform the oath. I will perform the oath, which I saw, you know, uh, saw, saw to, unto Abraham thy father. I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy sea shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Look at verse 5. He said, because that Abraham obeyed my voice. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. So service to God has to do with obedience to the voice of God. He said, he kept my charge. It has to do with keeping the charge of the Almighty. He said, my commandments, my status, and my law. For the sake of time, let's look at Luke chapter 1 from verse 70 to 75. He said, Now we will be saved from our now we will be saved from our enemies and from all who ate us. That will be someone's testimony from this morning. In the name of Jesus, you will be saved from your enemy and you will be saved from those that hate you. In the name of Jesus, if you believe that word of God, say amen where you are. In the name of Jesus. He, verse 72, he said, he has been merciful unto our ancestors by remembering his sacred covenant. The covenant is sworn with oath to our ancestor, Abraham. 
He said, we have been rescued from our enemies so we can serve God without fear. We have been rescued from our enemies so that we can serve God without fear. People of God, hear this. You cannot serve God with fear. It will not happen. And that's why in Acts chapter 4, Peter and the like says, can we, do we obey God or man? He said, you yourself should be the judge now. And look at verse 75. We are talking about the ingredients of service. He said, you will serve God without fear. In what? In holiness and righteousness. For as long as we live. Let me tell you, any service that removes holiness, any service that removes righteousness, any service that remove obedience, sacrifice, righteousness, justice, truth, and love, there is a problem with that service. There is a problem with that service. There is a problem. Philippians 4, Philippians 4, 8. He said, therefore, he said, whatsoever thing is just, whatsoever thing is lovely, whatsoever thing is of good record. He said, think on these things. Think on those things. Think on those things. Think on those things. On those things. Now, Think on those things. Let's look, look at this. He said, what are the, let me read to you Matthew 7, 21 to give credence to certain things. Here. Matthew 7, 21. He said, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, we enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do the will of my father in heaven will enter. Only those who do the will of my father. See, there is something critical about the will of God in the, in the offering of our service. He said, on judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. He said, but I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me. You who break God's law. You who break God's law. May we never become a lawbreaker, particularly the law of God. In the name of Jesus, receive grace this morning to keep the laws of God intact in the mighty name of Jesus. What are the facts about service? Number one. Not every service is acceptable. It's a fact. Not every service is acceptable. And you have seen it here. Now, imagine we get to heaven and somebody that have raised plenty of dead people, heal the sick, cast out demons, and God say, get you behind me. And someone that was just fulfilling the kind, you know, the kindness of God to another set of human beings. And God said, welcome, thou faithful servant into the joy of your Lord. Not every service is acceptable. Don't be deceived. Now, two, in God's service, God is the recruiter. In God's service, God is the recruiter. Third, God can bring anyone into his service. See the case of Rea in Joshua. In the, in the book of Joshua, and in Joshua verse 6, chapter 6, you know, uh, what, did, what is it that Rahab did? Was Rahab part of the evangelism team? She was never in the evangelism team. Was she in church? She was not in church. And that is not to say that we must not go to church. The Bible said that forsake not the assembly of one another. There is something about church that strengthens you. There's something about the unity. We saw a clear example in the book of Acts. How that they break bread. How that their communion brings strength to them. Lastly, on the fact about service. Service is not the same thing as activity. Let me tell you. Anytime we walk in disobedience to the laws of God, Anytime that we turn our back to the will of God, what we have is activity and not service. And there is no guarantee for, for, for a reward for activity. But we saw the guarantee, we will see it shortly. The help that are available in service, particularly acceptable service, 
reasonable service. He said, I therefore beseech you that you might offer your body as a living sacrifice, which is also your reasonable service, a living sacrifice, a reasonable service, an acceptable one. Praise God. Now, what are the apps that are available in service? What are the help that are available in service? Number one, service brings God into the equation of your life. Service brings God into the equation of our lives. When we obey God, when we choose to follow his will, there is something that happens to us. He brings God into the equation of our lives. And let me tell you, when God is involved in your life and in my life, enemies, our enemies are in trouble. Look at the children of, look at the Israelites. They were not even aware in Numbers 23, 24, that Balak and Balaam had connived together to cause them. They were just enjoying God. Ah, I decree and I prophesy this money. Someone listening to me, against the manipulations of the enemy, you will keep on enjoying the Lord in the name of Jesus. Against the distractions from the camp of your enemies, you will keep on blossoming. You will become so fruitful in every season that the enemy will say, only God can do this. That will be someone's testimony beginning from this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, service brings you into a covenant position, a covenant relationship with God. A covenant relationship with God. In Numbers 25, verses 10 to 13, you know, the Bible talks about the fact, you know, it talks about the fact that the people, you know, they, they, they were committing war. They were doing all manners of nonsense. And uh, there was a man called Phineas. And Phineas took a javelin. See, let me tell you, Phineas was not a priest. If you read that scripture, Numbers 25, the Bible says that there is a man among the congregation, a, you know, a, a, a floor member. He saw that this thing is not of God, and he took his javelin and thrust it into both of them that were doing that rubbish. And the Bible said that the plague that had killed thousands of them, the plague stopped. And God said, I will make covenant with you. And God, God, you know, God made a covenant with him. God made a covenant with him. Let, 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 let me quickly read that scripture to us. In, in Numbers 25, you know, God made a covenant with him. God made a covenant with him. You, you know, from verse 12, he said, Wherefore, say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. See, anytime we offer service to God, it brings us into a covenant relationship with God. And when you get to that point that you have a covenant relationship with God, things about your life will take off like never before. I remember one of God's servants said, one of the patriarchs in the land said, God said to him, even if you want to be poor now, it is too late. And many of us will know that person. You know, our beloved bishop, Bishop David Oyedeko, he said, God said to him, if you want to, if you, if you really want to be poor now, it is too late. Why? Because his service to God and to humanity had brought him into a covenant relationship with God. And you know, many other times, people, many people will say nonsense. People that do not know your secret service. You know, I love secret service. I love secret service, man. And it has saved me from a whole lot of trouble many times. Secret service. You are just in your corner praying for someone. And at the time, God will begin to touch people on your own behalf. You are just in your corner praying for people that do not even know that you pray for them. I remember there was a time every morning we pray for people that are in prison. People that are in the hospital. People that are traveling, you know, and one day, one of my organs in Abuja, we were together and he shared a testimony. He said, Wally, I, I used to, I, he said, I have a cousin. He said, that cousin had been in the prison for over 20 years. He said, he was released yesterday. And do you know what? I started crying. He said, Wally, why are you crying now? I said, sir, we were in the church yesterday 
Because when I was when I was working in Abuja, I go to church every morning before going to work. Every morning I go to church. You know, it's, I said we were praying yesterday, and I felt so strongly that God is doing something about the prisoners. He said, and we were praying for them. He said, when he was released yesterday, I was just crying like a baby. Let me tell you something. When you have a secret service that can touch the heart of God, you cannot go down in life. It is not possible. Let them gather anything they want to gather against you. Your life will keep on progressing. And that is what works. That's what works. That's what works. I've seen it again and again. Again and again. See, let me tell you, you are not yet married. You are praying for people that are believing God for the fruit of the womb. You know, I remember, let me also say this, to the, all, you know, to the glory of God, to the glory of God. Years back, I have a friend who is also outside the country and is on this call right now, I guess. You know, we, 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 we will be praying for some persons that just got married and they have delay in childbearing. You know, we pray to a point that the name, where it was written in my Bible, the anointing oil cleared off the name, but I know the name that I wrote there because Bible can no longer write on that paper. And you know what? It, come, it came to a time that person was everywhere looking out for my good. And till today, till I'm telling you now, he was not aware that we were praying for him. So many a times when he was looking for my good, trying to be a blessing, many people would be saying, as well as sham this person. I did not sham him. There was a secret service that positioned me, you know, in that realm, in that realm. Please get into a secret service today. And that is what we are saying in this meeting. That's what we are saying in this meeting. Look at verse 13, or that number 25. He said, and he shall have it, and he seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was serious for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. He said, now the name of Israel that was slain was about, um, you know, about 20 something thousand of them had been killed. But somebody took it upon himself. And, he, you know, he, 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 he was able to redeem the time for them. And God was able to stop what God was doing. Can somebody stand up for what is going on in the northern part of Nigeria? That God might be able to stop those things. Then a see, see, when you get to the United States, they will be telling you about people that are in the secret service. I love SSS. I tell you, at the time I applied. I applied at different times. I was not taking. They said, well, the way you are going about things, you will not want to lie. You cannot come here. Secret service. You know, you are just in your corner. See, if if I get, if I'm in the bus stop, I'm just sharing, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I think somebody else is doing what I'm doing. But you think you are not normal. You know, if I'm at the bus stop and I want to enter a taxi and I see some persons, they will be sick, you know, they will be like, I say, Father, please, can you please heal this person? I was going home from work three days ago and I was almost getting to first stack in Lagos. And I saw an ambulance in the evening was blowing, pa, 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 rotting, and I stretched forth my hands into, that, into the ambulance. Incidentally, we were praying for this meeting at that time, 6 p.m. in the evening, and I stretched forth my hand to the ambulance. I said, God, please, can you heal the person that is inside the ambulance? Can you please turn the situation around and heal the person? I don't know the person. I may never meet the person in my life. And let me tell you, I had an encounter with God when I was in school. We were in the room, we were playing. And all of a sudden, I felt a smell in my nose. And I turned to the bed. As I turned to the bed, you know, I saw a man with a big saw in his leg. Ah, and I said, God, why is this saw this big in one man's leg? He said, this man that you see, he said, he picked money on the floor, on the street of just. He said, this place you are looking at, this is just. He said, he picked money on the floor. I said, God, please, can, 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 you, can, you, heal, can, can you heal this person? You know, there, there is a grace in the house for service this morning. I can feel the hand of God so mightily. You know, his hand is so mighty in this meeting this morning. And I know that hand is upon you wherever you are. Can you go ahead in one minute and speak in tongues to God? That let the hand rest upon us. Let it 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 rest upon us. 
us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Let me say to you, and as I faced that bed, I prayed for that person. Lo and behold, I was in the university that time. After many years that I finished university and I started working, like seven years after that I started working, I had the first privilege to visit the city of Jos in the year 2017. In the year 2017, let me tell you, when you have prayed for people and you have wished them were in a secret service to God, you will get into places you will get on platform that nobody know, knew, they knew nothing about. And they will be wondering why God is doing it for them. Let me tell you, it, it is the hand of God, simply the hands of God. Simply the hands of God. Are you, I, I work with a boss in the office who is also on this call right now. My, my former manager is on this call right now. See, I look at it, her heart and how she does some things. And when I look at what God is doing with her life, every other person may be surprised. I, I am not surprised. She called me sometimes ago. She said, Well, can you guess the next thing? I told that straight. He said, Well, how did you know? I said, I knew two years ago. I said, I knew two years ago. That what happened this year? I knew two years ago. See, let me tell you, miracle we end. Prophesying will come to an end. He can even get you to heaven. He cannot get you to pass the judgment of God. And that's why he said, I will say to them, Get ye behind me, ye workers of iniquity, for I know you not. For I know you not. For I know you not. Let's run because of our time so that we can finish here. See, he said, service, some, you know, service makes some things about you to change permanently. Service can change your life permanently. Service brings about divine establishment. Service brings about divine establishment. The next one, so when you serve the will of God, you will play host to his presence. When you serve God, his presence will be with us because we are, we are obeying his commandment. We are doing this way. His presence will always be with us. Service brings about divine preservation, not just for you, but for your generations after you. Service brings about divine preservation. Joshua 6.25, a real behalot as a dwelling among the people of God till today because of service. Till today because of service. Service brings upon a man irreversible blessings. Service brings upon a man irreversible blessings. And we have seen that in our Bible text in Exodus. That is what service does to people. People of God, service has the capacity to do that. Service has the capacity to do that. You know, without wasting time, I want us to take an hymn for five minutes. Please give us 10 minutes more. Let's take an hymn. As we take this hymn, the hand of God will come upon your life so that you will know that this is not only one team. This is not the team that prayer. This is not their team. It, and we have said, in the service of God, God is the recruiter. The, the song that said draw me near, we are going to take the hymn together now for four minutes, 45 seconds thereabout. And as, as that hymn is going on, please be telling God what you want from him. And he would have done it without any human intervention by the time we are done from here. He would have done it without any human intervention in the mighty name of Jesus. God would have done it without any human intervention in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. So for the, 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 the next five minutes, we're going to take that hymn. Please get it, get it, and get everything you want from God. Get everything that you want from God. share it so that you can get more volume.
bleed inside, tell him to draw you nearer, tell him to draw you, tell him to draw you. There's no one that can draw us. Tell God to draw you nearer to himself. Tell God to draw you. Tell God to draw you. Tell God to draw you. We've been able to establish when we serve the will of God, it brings us into a covenant relationship, divine establishment, divine preservation. You know, it, it blesses our bread, our water. It takes away sickness from the midst of us. No one of us we cast is young. They are the blessings that are attached to service. But until God draws a man, there are none of these things we find expression that it draws nearer to yourself in this meeting. In the mighty name of Jesus, that it draws nearer to yourself in this meeting. In the name of Jesus, that it draws nearer to yourself in this meeting. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. You know, well, let's pray a few prayers. We will come back later in the evening today, 8 p.m. to 8.30, 30 minutes prayer. 8 p.m. to 8.30, 30 minutes prayer. That's what we have been doing. Because we discovered that the one, one hour may not be enough. And we don't just want to speak without betting, you know, giving back to those things in prayer. 
in the evening. So please write your prayer points as you come in the evening today. Because the ever we kiss the earth today, and something unique will happen. But I want you to tell God this one. The part of what God told us is that he's going to heal people. He's going to heal their heart. He's going to heal their body. Perhaps you have been offended in the process of giving your service to God, maybe in the church, or, or some people, you know, I've seen instances of where people give money to people and they also take the money to another list house. And let me tell you, if you know the testimony behind that, you'll be, you'll be sorry for such people. The hand of that person, the person that took the money to another list house, the hand became swollen up. See, it is not, see, grant can swallow anything, but not a seed. Your service is a seed. Grant can swallow anything, but not a seed. Your service is a seed. Can you tell it to God this morning? That be in any form and everywhere that have been injured, that have been in that in service to God and humanity, that be I receive healing this morning. Some persons have said, I will never do that again. I will never serve God. If this is what it means to serve God, I will never go to that church. I will never serve God again. Let me tell you, in the service of God, God is the recruiter. And his own desire, he can bring anyone into his service. You are serving God, you are not serving man. So please go back and give your service to God. Then they will receive healing and deliverance this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Then they will receive healing, will receive deliverance this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Then they will receive healing, will receive deliverance. This morning, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. One of the things that God told us is that the angels of God in this meeting are bringing gifts to men by ascending and descending through a ladder. I don't know what you want, but as we speak right now, be asking God for those things that you want. Tell God, Daddy, on the basis of my service, take this sickness away from my body. On the basis of my service, heal this my child. On the basis of my service, Daddy, activate my marital destiny. Make me fruitful. Daddy, increase me on our side on the basis of my service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, remember me on the basis of my service. Daddy, do not forget my service. Daddy, remember me in the name of Jesus. Daddy, remember me, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Let's take one more prayer, then I will pray and we close. In the evening, 30 minutes, 8 to 8 p.m., it says that people will be taken to a new dimension in Christ as it pertains to service. Hear that? Me and you, we will be taken into a new dimension in our service to God as a result of what we are hearing this morning. And therefore, let's tell it to God, Daddy, take me to the next level. Let me tell you, if today you are a millionaire, God wants you to be a billionaire. If today you are witnessing to two souls, five souls, God wants you to, God wants to increase that service. He wants to increase the oil of service upon our life. Can you tell it to God that he increase the oil of service upon my head in the name of Jesus? You know, your children will get to abroad and somebody will be telling them, something, someone just says that I should help you. Even here in Nigeria, they will tell you, someone just said to me, I should go and help you. See, it is as a result of service. Can you tell it to God? That they give me the oil of service in the name of Jesus. You cannot just live and live for yourself alone. It will be, it will, it will be a great disservice to the grace and the anointing of God upon your destiny. That they take us to the next level in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, including myself. Daddy, that you will take us to the next level. Our service will become very productive in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. As I pray for us right now, I want you to please activate your faith. It is simple. You know, Peter knelt down by the side of Tabitha, which is called Dorcas. And Dorcas was dead at chapter 9. He was dead. They baited for him like they bait the, you know, they, they bait for dead people. And they put her in lying state there. And Peter knelt down to pray. And the moment Peter received that substance, Peter turned to Tabitha and he said, Tabitha, 
arise. So it is simple this morning. Let your faith be here. Father, we thank you for everyone in this meeting, online, on grant, on Miss LR, on Facebook, on Zoom. Everyone that is connected to this meeting, people here from the US, people from the UK, people from Scotland, people from you know, the Europe, people from across Nigeria. Daddy, we thank you because only you could have brought us together like this to speak this truth to us at this point because you want to advance our life. Daddy, please take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Daddy, take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Daddy, on the basis of your word this morning, I decree in the name that is above every other name that every good gift, every blessing that our life requires for the next level of service, Daddy, we receive them right now in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and receive those gifts right now in the name of Jesus. Receive fruit of the womb in the name of Jesus. Receive deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Receive healing from that migraine in the name of Jesus. That shame that is making you to be afraid, it will never land. Receive deliverance from shame in the name of Jesus. Receive deliverance from poverty in the name of Jesus. Let God remember our service and let him send us blessings from Zion. I call you forth this morning from sickness. Receive healings in your body in the name of Jesus. Come out of sickness. Come out of death. Come out of problems. Come out of loneliness. Come out of lack of blessings in your career, in your business. Come out of stagnation in the name of Jesus. Come out of stagnation in the name of Jesus. Everything and anything that has covered the glory of God upon your life and my life that makes us struggle, that has covered the glory of God upon this meeting time of it. This morning, by the fire of God, God remove those covering. In the name of Jesus, when Jesus called Lazarus for, he said, lose him and let him go. This morning, I decree in the name of the Lord God of heaven, you are loosed and you are free. In the name of Jesus, to serve God without fear. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Thank you, internal rock of ages. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I see a number of people from the U.S. this morning. You know, and uh, let's say this to you, the U.S. people and the U.K. people, Scotland. If you are able to give us your own time, we will do the time of help for you. Time of help U.S. If you are more than three, we are willing to, the bank said that where two or three are gathered. If you are more than three, we will bring time of it to U.S. and do it for you online the way we are doing it in your own time. Because I know so many of us now, we should be around maybe 4 a.m. in the morning and you have joined since maybe 3 a.m. So if you are able to organize five people, we will send the link to you. It may not be third Saturday. It can be an evening meeting, you know, evening of a counter. We will bring time of it to U.S. We will bring it to Canada. We will bring it to U.K. You know, the people in Europe, your time should be similar. We will bring it to you. Thank you for coming this morning. You have to wake up this early. And my, my, our Nigerian people, thank you for always showing up. I know many of us, there are two, three, four people that are connected from wherever we are. Before that evening, we will hear your testimony. By the time you are coming in at 8 p.m., you are already coming with answers. Let me tell you part of the things that will happen. God will begin to give you insights as to what he wants you to do. Let me tell you, it does not matter how man feels about it. If it is God that said it to you, please plug in and continue. God told us about this July 21st, 2020. July 21st, 2020. And he said to us, the first edition must be by August 15th. I hurriedly went to go and share calendar. Say, if it is during the week, we will not be saying we are doing service during the week. And lo and behold, it came on a third Saturday, a free day for us. And even for the church of God at that point in time. Let me tell you, whatever God says to you, it may not be popular at the beginning. And that is your test that you have to pass. It must not be accepted by everybody for you to start. But when you start and you put your consistency behind the will and the desire and the instruction of God, it will take you to places. Ask people today. Bishop Edebo will tell you they started with 12 people, 12 people. Miles Moreau said they were seven when they started. 
And these are things that have been built into nations. That thing that God told you, that business, please go and do it. You know, I saw someone here, God is taking away your darkness. I don't know what darkness represents. He's taking that darkness away and he's bringing light into that situation for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming this morning. The Lord bless you really good. We come again in the evening, um, 8 p.m. in the evening to for 30 minutes of prayer, strictly prayers this evening. And as we come, the Lord bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. See you in the evening. What do I worship you? Yeah. There's no better way to spend my life. No better way to spend my time. Forever it's your presence I'll change. Everything else proceeds from me. Amen. Amen. Thank There's you, Lola. No Thank you. Thank you. No better way to spend my time. Forever it's your presence, I'll change. Everything that's proceeds from me. I'll forever sing in your presence. I'll forever sing in your presence. Yeah.